to see you, sir. Nice to see you, Greta. Okay, the tax bill. You like it, the proposed tax bill? Yeah, I like it. I think it's a big change. I mean, this time a year ago, what was it? Same president, same Congress, ramming the health care law down our throats this year. They're saying, we'll do some of the things you think are important, such as let's don't have a big tax increase for every American in January. It's only two years. Uh, many Republicans want it longer. Club for Growth says uh, they're opposed to it because it's not permanent. Well, I want it to be permanent. And if all I had to do is be in a debating society or, or if I were king, that's the way it would be. But we're not that way. We have a Democratic president. We have a Democratic Congress. Same people we had a year, last year. And uh, we've got uh, a two-year extension of the tax rates. The reason it's such a good idea is it's the single best thing we could do to, to make it easier and cheaper to create private sector jobs. From a political viewpoint, you've boxed yourselves in with two years. If you'd gone three years, you wouldn't be at another election cycle. I mean, you're doing, you're doing to yourselves in two years what you're doing now, where there's all this pressure and a lot of uh, people are making votes, perhaps, politically. Well, maybe, maybe, but first, it, we have a Democratic president and big majorities in the Congress, so it's not us making all the decisions. Second, uh, most Republicans don't mind talking about taxes in two years. I mean, we want permanent tax rates. Uh, we like the tax rates we have for now, certainly nothing higher, and we're willing to debate that in two years. All right, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, you started debating this tax issue about, I don't know, a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. when we've known since 2001 it's going to expire at the end of this year. When do you think you're going to begin debating this it, uh, two years, uh, this two-year extension. Well, you've been, you've been making that point very, very well on your show, and you're right about that, but we've been talking about that, too. But we're not in charge of the Senate. We're not in charge of the House yet, and we don't have the president, so we haven't been able to set the agenda. We've been ready to have a permanent extension of the current tax rates for months, and have said so, and virtually every Republican has signed a letter to that effect. The Republicans say that they want the tax uh, cuts extended for all uh, economic uh, classes, lower, middle, and upper, um, because it's, they say it's good for jobs and business. But people who make business decisions need to make them out more than two years. And so you're only giving them a two-year notice on this. So how do you expect that to help uh, business? Well, I, again, if we were doing it alone, if we had a Republican president, a Republican House, a Republican Senate, that's what we do, but we don't, it's the other way. But if I'm a small businessman in Tennessee or woman, here's what I see. For two years, uh, the government's not gonna be taking more tax money from me, I can invest it in jobs. I get 100% expensing of everything I invest in or buy this year, that means a lot. Second, I get some certainty, at least for two years, and next, my employees are gonna get one third reduction in their payroll tax payments, which maybe they'll spend and buy my goods. So it's not as good as a permanent extension, but it's better than the largest tax in history starting January 1st for most Americans. I'm a little bit perplexed how everyone knows how much taxes we should collect, how much we're going to need, in light of the fact that there's a tremendous amount of waste, do you agree, built into what the government spends? Do you agree with that or not? Of course. All right. So I don't understand like why we don't have the aggressiveness going after the waste. For instance, the ethanol program, some say it's fleecing Americans to the tune of about six billion dollars. I mean there's which may be nickel and diamond. I can pull out different projects. So so why doesn't why don't the people here on Capitol Hill and the president think, let's figure out what we need. Let's first get rid of the things that we're just frankly wasting money on. Well one reason is because the tax rates automatically go up on the 1st of January unless we act now. Not a surprise and, though. And so the, wa the waste has been and, there. And we've been saying, we've been saying we need to act on it. So we need to act and we are acting. That's what we're doing. Second, we need to do exactly what you're saying. Oversight, oversight, oversight is what we should be doing. It's easier for the House Republicans to do it next year. They have the chairman, they have the majorities. We in the Senate will be doing it as well. Medicare is where the biggest amount of waste, fraud and abuse is. Senator Cobra and others have pointed that out. We're going to go after it. But how, how do we get, I mean, every time we have an election cycle, we hear our representatives on both sides of the aisle say, you know, when I, when I become whatever, I'm going to really zero in on that waste. And so we go out and we vote for the person, but we don't zero in on the waste. I mean, the waste just seems to be exploding in this city. And, you know, we got to run our government, but, but if we're just, you know, throwing a lot of cash away, it doesn't seem like a very efficient and, and good thing to do to Americans. No, you're exactly right, but I don't want to overpromise on that. We're going to have a Republican House capable of doing better oversight than we ever have. We didn't do it as well before. One of the things that we need to show in the next two years is that if we're a governing party, if we get a majority after 2012, we'll go after the waste in a systematic way. One way would be a two-year budget 
which means every other year we could focus most of our time on repealing laws, on, on, on oversight, on eliminating waste rather than on appropriations. How's the president doing leading? He's getting a lot of heat from his base right now. A lot of people, a lot of the uh, left-wing part of his uh, side of his party not happy, um, saying that he caved in on the extending the tax cuts to people who make more than a million dollars and more than $250,000. Um, what's your opinion how he's leading? Uh, that means he's probably doing better. I mean, a, 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 a president, I mean, w what we're seeing here is something we haven't seen for two, two years. We call it a check and a balance. We call it give and take. Most Americans want to see that. They didn't want to see a runaway Obama presidency. Over the last two years, he gave in to the left. Now he's saying, uh, look, we're going to have to work with the Republicans, and that means we're going to have to extend taxes for at least two years. I think that's a step in the right direction, but it's not easy for him. How do we know when compromise is a sign of strength and a sign of, or a sign of weakness? Well, we have reporters like you who look <laughs> no, very but seriously. carefully. Well, well, what is it? I mean, what well, is the difference? President Reagan used to say, well, what we look for is consensus. And, and, and sometimes if we compare ideas, we get good ideas. For example, the, the idea of cutting the payroll tax temporarily has been a Republican idea as well as a Democratic idea. The problem with it is it costs money and we don't have a solvent social security system at the moment. So we look for areas where we agree and apparently we're about to agree that a tax increase in the middle of an economic downturn is a bad idea because it makes it harder to create private sector jobs. That's called consensus, that's called bipartisan, that's good for the country. Senator Sanders said he may filibuster um, this. I wouldn't be surprised. If, I mean, Senator Sanders is a, a wonderful person, a nice guy who describes himself as a socialist. He's not going to like this. Uh, so is this going to pass? We're going to... I hope it does. I think most Republicans will support it. We don't like all parts of it. We would like for it to be permanent, both the estate tax as well. And, and, and we, don't like not, we, we don't like passing the employment compensation in a way that adds to the deficit. None of us likes that. But we think it's urgent that we not have this huge tax increase starting January 1. So I'm going to support it. I think the question is not political, but is it right for the country? I think yes. In terms of the timing, are we likely to get to don't ask, don't tell by the end of the year? I hope not. I mean, we, it ought to have a full debate on the Senate floor. We're going to debate it. And really, we need to have a different sort of study, one which asks whether we should do it, not how to do it. How about the START Treaty? Will there be a vote by the end of the year? There could be if the president and and uh, Senator Reid want to bring it up. I mean, the Democrats could have brought up the START Treaty last week, the week before. Whenever it comes up, it needs plenty of time for debate. There's still time left, but if you bring up Don't Start, Don't Tell, Dream Act, uh, Firefighters Bill, all these other things, you won't have time to debate the START Treaty uh, before Christmas. Senator, thank you. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Next, could there be a mutiny? You're about to meet a Democratic 